In this video, I want to cover a popular topic that I get asked um, all the time, and that is the key differences between Geomagic Design X and Geomagic for SolidWorks. And it makes sense people are asking this question because there is a cost difference between the two packages. Um, they both accomplish a similar deliverable. They just accomplish it in uh, different ways and have different limitations. Um, so today I'm going to talk about these and I'm going to demonstrate some of them live. I'm going to break this down into uh, kind of three different categories. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is about the platform themselves and how they're different, the scanning tools and how they're different, and then the modeling tools and how they're different. And hopefully that'll give you an idea of which product will work for you. Um, so first of all, I think on the platform uh, topic, really they are on completely different platforms. That is obvious. Um, but DX is a standalone package. So I always point that out to people. This is a standalone software package that works with SolidWorks, Inventor, AutoCAD, NX, SolidEdge, and even saves out CATIA uh, files. Um, but I don't include that in the live transfer. And then it also has a live transfer to SolidEdge, but without any history. Um, so DX is a standalone package. And in Geomagic uh, for SolidWorks, just like its name um, insists there, is that it is our Geomagic platform on top of SolidWorks. So if you have SolidWorks, this is where the conversation really starts, is if I have SolidWorks, do I want DesignX or do I want Geomagic for SolidWorks? If you do not have SolidWorks, then you need to consider that you need to purchase SolidWorks and uh, Geomagic for SolidWorks and then run those together. So that changes the cost of what Geomagic for SolidWorks is. So because uh, DesignX is a standalone package, we can load a lot more scan data than Geomagic for SolidWorks. Uh, one comment that I often say is, with Geomagic for SolidWorks, you're kind of running two softwares at once. You're running SolidWorks, which um, uses a certain amount of memory, and then you have our platform running inside of it as well, right? Now, another consideration is if you're running Geomagic for SolidWorks, make sure that you have a computer that's compatible with SolidWorks and uh, Geomagic for SolidWorks. So you need a computer that meets both of those uh, computer specs in order to properly operate the way it needs to. So uh, one thing that I'll say is DesignX can honestly handle like double the amount of scan data that Geomagic for SolidWorks does, but that is also dependent on the machine you're running on, like I am talking about before. If you have a very limited machine, the double is not going to really show that much. But if you have a pretty fast machine, Design X is going to perform much better because it's going to have the ability to uh, work with a lot more scan data. Also, Design X likes processor speed. When it was designed, processor speed was all the rage, and a lot of our development is done uh, utilizing that. So the faster processor, that does help. You know, a lot of people want many cores and lots of RAM, and all those things are helpful, of course. But we also like processor speed. We'll use every bit of that, um, especially for those single core type processes. Um, DesignX supports every major scanner on the market with either plugins or file importers. Um, so if you come over here and I go to import and I scroll up and down, this software has been around for 20 plus years. So we open all kinds of scanner files, native scanner files. Um, and then we also have this live capture where we can connect to all these different scanners here with the live capture, or we have plug-in windows that pop up in some of these others. So there's like a few different places where you can connect to these different scanners. Um, so these are the different plugins for the different companies that make different scanners. So DesignX connects to everyone that's available. 
on the SOLIDWORKS side, the way to figure out what um, Geomagic for SOLIDWORKS connects to is you can come over to the settings here. And then if you come in and go to active device, you'll see that we connect to these right here, Creaform, Faro, the Faro Cobalt, uh, Geomagic Capture, which is discontinued now, but we still connect to it. Um, hexagon uh, arms and then the Nikon arms. So you see those are the devices that we connect to. It's a, it's a more limited list there. But if you are using one of those devices, then obviously that's good. And as far as the import options, those are a little bit different as well. If I come over here for polygons, you got uh, G3D, OBG, OBJ, PLY, STL, which that covers, you know, most people use OBJ, PLY, or STL. Some point clouds where you, we're using ASCII formats, and you can modify an ASCII file and just put ASC at the end and we'll open it. Um, and then some gridded point cloud formats like BTX, PTX. Um, so it's a, it's a smaller list of import options that we have on the Geomagic for SolidWorks side. Um, as far as on the DX side, DX exports pretty much every format that you can think of for CAD and scan data, just like on the import side, depending on what we have selected, we will limit the list to export what's allowed to go in those different file container types, right? So for scans, we export all those different scan formats. And then on the CAD, we actually will export different CAD formats as well. You know, we're not gonna save a history based uh, like SOLIDWORKS part, but that's where the live transfer tool comes in, which I can talk about a little bit later. But um, live transfer tool will take whatever we model in here and send it over to whatever CAD that we have available, um, which is another platform uh, issue here. If you do not have SOLIDWORKS, like I mentioned before, you have Inventor, you know, DX is going to be more attractive because I can send over native entities. So if I make an extrusion in here and we hit send to inventor, it will build the sketch with all the dimensions, constraints, relations, and extrude it the same distance and everything in that inventor part. To the, and if I save that inventor part, it will, you know, people would never know that it came from our software. And that is true for SOLIDWORKS, Creo, Inventor, and NX. Those are the ones that the solid, that the live transfer works very well. Um, so that is it for the platform uh, portion. So now I'll talk a little bit about scanning tools and what's available in here versus, uh, you know, what's available in Geomagic for SOLIDWORKS. So under scanning tools, we have a plethora of scanning tools inside of DesignX. So you got all the whole filling technologies, uh, all the different smoothing options. You can trim and split. You can even convert CAD objects that you've modeled back to scan data, um, which is really neat, interesting tools there. But overall, I like to say that Geomagic for SolidWorks has about a quarter of the scan processing tools that um, that uh, DX has. So if you look at the Geomagic for SOLIDWORKS screen, the way I always describe this is on the left-hand side over here, this area is the hardware section where you're gonna connect to different devices and scan. This middle area here is the scan tools. And then on the right-hand side, these are the modeling tools. Uh, the separate groups, right? So if you look here, from here, aligning objects to merging scan data, and then your editing tools, you see here that you have the essentials. You can align scans together in different groups of scans. You can merge them and sample them. And then here you can edit them. You can fill basic hole filling. It's not going to do a fill all. Um, there's lots of limitations in the filling area where you come in. I can basically just fill complete holes with curvature, tangent, and uh, flat fill. And you do have a fill all, so I lied there. You do have fill all uh, inside of that tool. But the fill all does not have the option like in DesignX where you can ignore large holes or ignore 
some of them by deselecting them. So there, there are some major differences there. Simplify is your decimate tool. You can run repair, remove spikes. So it has a lot less uh, smoothing options um, in there. Um, and so that's it. So you got your align, your merging and sampling, and then these are your editing tools on the Geomagic for SolidWorks side. Um, on the Design X side, there's a bunch of other things in here in the scan tools that um, many people don't realize that they need until the moment arises. So one thing that's really nice if you're doing a lot of scanning and work is we have these scan processes. So here's a scan process designer. I can build these little mini scripts. So if I just grab one, this one right here is run healing wizard and heal the mesh run auto surface, and then export, right? So you can build these scripts with all these commands over here. And they work for uh, scan data processing as well. I use them often. So if there are certain processes that I always run through where I want to select a bunch of scans, merge them together, decimate them down, run repair, run smoothing, region group. Like I can just build that script really fast just drag them over here and you can click and change all the settings in here, just like you were running the command and then save that script. So if I get out of this, I have some scripts already built. You go over to the run, you select the data that you want to work on and then you select the script that you want to run and it will run automatically. So this works really well. So if you're doing the same steps over and over again, when you're scanning, um, scan processes are amazing. Um, you also have the ability to batch process scans, which is very similar to scan processing. The thing that's nice about running a batch process is the ability to take that batch process and run it outside of this environment here. Um, so with a batch process, I always forget where it is because we've moved it around in different softwares here. Scan process. So right here, batch process, you can, uh, it works exactly like scan processes, but the batch processing tool, um, it has a window that pops up. You build a script just like it, and it runs outside of this platform. That way it's not running the software. So the scan processes will run right on the object that's on the screen. Uh, what this will do is if I have a collection of like 50 different scans that I need to decimate them all down, I can go over to batch process and tell it to run decimate on all 50. It will grab it, load it, decimate it, put it and save it out as whatever you want. And you can just go through there. So batch processing is a really cool tool. Um, DX has texture tools, color texture tools. So if I scan with a scanner that has a uh, texture, you know, color, like this icon shows right here. If I scan somebody's face with the scanner that captures color, you have the ability to do some basic color texture editing in here. Now, um, Geomagic for SolidWorks, if you scan, you will have the color, but there's really no tools to work with that color once it's there. Um, some other scan tools that are really neat is the ability to unroll scans. So we have this uh, unroll uh scan option here where it said unroll a scan i'll just hit the help button again just to kind of show because i don't have a button um this isn't a complete flatten command what it is is the ability to take these cylindrical objects and flatten them out via unrolling with a radius there um, so you can do that um, that's built right into design x that's a really neat tool um some other things that are in here, average mesh to create uh, like a golden part is really powerful. If I come over here and I go to tools, scan tools, average meshes, this is really, really neat. I could scan like 20 of these scans and, you know, this is a manufactured part that has tons of error in it. I can take that 20 scans of this object and then average them together to create like a golden part. You can even take uh, a impeller like this or a propeller 
and you can average the blades together. We also have this align radial pattern option where you can select a circular circular pattern and it will take all three of these and rotate them and put them on top of each other, average them and output an averaged mesh. So for reverse engineering, very, very high accurate parts like turbine blades and things like that, the uh, average meshes tool is a very cool tool to use. Um, so in general, as you can see, we have more robust scan processing tools for merging, hole filling, and mesh healing in here. So if you're doing this a lot and you're processing things all the time, you will want some of these tools to make your process faster. Um, another scan tool, this is uh, kind of a side point here that is a lot easier in Design X is this region tools. The region tools, will go through region groups in general are you run this auto segment tool and it will create these different colored regions. And I don't have to run, you know, region auto segment. I can just select air, polygons and then say create region and it we will create a region from that. But many people start from an auto segment where there our software will go through the mesh in these triangles, it will group triangles based on common curvature. So there is an angle between triangles as they tr describe the shape because triangles are flat, right? And we will group them based on common curvature and create these selectable areas. And what that is useful for, regions for, are useful for, is I can click that whole top area and I can say, hey, let's fit a plane to that. So they're almost like an advanced selection set where everything's kind of pre-selected and ready for you to go. And if you need to edit these in any way, you see how this region group has got all these little holes in here. DX has a lot of tools where I can say, I want to enlarge. So I'll enlarge that whole region group selection set. And I can hit enlarge again, and you'll see that it'll shrink those holes down if I just go a couple rows of triangles out. And then I can even retract it back in back where it was and when i retract it back in those holes will no longer be there so if i just run this a couple times it'll get rid of those and then you can run shrink shrink and, and come all the way back now the way regions work inside of geomagic for solidworks i'll just toggle over here is you come into the regions tool you can run the auto segment so you have to run auto segment and then once you've run that you can come over to edit region and there's really just two different options here selecting triangles and then deselecting triangles and it's very manual so you can come in here and you can say i want to break this region here and you can adjust the uh, brush size over here And I can break these regions up into separate groups. Like if I don't want this text as part of this region, I can come in here and window in and and you basically only have the brush. I believe you only have the brush. Let me let me right click here when it's finished. Oh no, I think you have rectangle. Yes, so you do have the rectangle option. You have your, all your selection tools in here. So if I right click, I can also say I want to use the line tool and separate that out. And then it will remove that from the region. So you do have some, you know, rectangle uh, line segment, lasso and brush. And then you have some basic selection tools in here. And then when you're done editing, you click this and you get out. Now, in my experience, I don't really edit regions too much in here because they're a little bit flaky. They don't work as well inside of the SolidWorks environment. They, when they work, they work well. Um, but sometimes I just don't, I just don't want to work with them and fiddle with it because it takes so much longer to set regions up inside of Geomagic for SolidWorks than it does on the Design X side. Where in Design X, I can do something like this. I can grab the I can just grab that brush and hit that and then hit insert and it just created a region on the mesh, right? It takes seconds 
to edit this. Um, now I do run into a problem with all of my software um, inside of these uh, recording softwares and meeting softwares where it takes a couple seconds longer to run all the commands. So it's not going to be a very good demonstration of how fast this works when I'm recording my screen. But uh, regions are another very big difference, right? You have a ton of editing tools here. You have a few editing tools over there, but do you need them or not? You know, those are the things that um, you have to answer for yourself. So now for the modeling tools, these are, this is where a lot of the differences uh, are because as I talked about, we are a standalone software. So we have our own modeling tools inside of Design X. And then inside of Geomagic for SolidWorks, we're utilizing the modeling tools of SolidWorks alongside of our scanning tools. So um, you'll see here as we go through some of these points that I'm going to make um, where those differences are. So just general, a lot of people love using our auto surfacing command. So auto surface, uh, you can take a section of the model or you can take the complete model itself and run auto surface and it will just wrap surfaces around the outside shape of whatever scan data you input. This is in both of the softwares, um, the auto surface command. But on the design X side, if you want, if you don't want to run the auto, you have manual surfacing options where it will snap those surfaces to the mesh, just like the auto surface does. But you can dictate where those patch outlines are, and then uh, manually create those. On the on the uh, Geometric for SolidWorks side. You have the command here. Where did it go? Auto surface. When you run that, it's basically just you get what you get. You select mechanical or organic shape. And those are just guidelines. You can run either or on a shape, but what organic is going to be more free to follow the shape of the part. Mechanical is trying to going to try to keep the surface patches more structured and more CAD-like if possible. And then run it. Um, so auto surface is basically going to just output whatever you put in, no manual options there. Um, DX has uh, mesh sketching, which is a little bit different than the process of creating sketches inside of a Geomagic for SolidWorks. So on the Design X side, I'll start here and I'll show how to create a mesh sketch. And then I'll create that same um, sketch inside of Geomagic for SolidWorks. Um, this is usually a pretty critical piece of functionality for people that want to uh, do a lot of reverse engineering. So if inside of our software, we realize that what CAD is missing, besides the fact that getting meshes into the CAD environment is very difficult and they don't load heavy meshes inside of CAD environments very well. But when you create sketches, which is the foundational uh, principle most of the CAD modeling is based on inside of a CAD environment, um, there just aren't many tools to govern those sketches and interact with the scan data itself. You'll see what I mean here in a second as I go through this. Um, as I select this bottom plane, I can right click and I can create a regular, you know, CAD sketch, or I can do what we call a mesh sketch. With a mesh sketch, there's a ton of functionality in this dialog here. The first thing you can do is you can drag that plane anywhere you want and intersect it wherever you want through the mesh. Now, it doesn't slice it up there. What it does is that wherever I slice it through the mesh, it will project that scanned cross section back to the original plane and allow you, when we get into the uh, sketching tools in a second, it'll allow you to draw over top of it using our sketching tools. Um, but this will allow you to, so if I want to reverse engineer just that, just that um, flange, I can find a happy place where I want to intersect that sketch with the flange, and then you'll see it projects it back to the original plane. I can also add multiple sections. So I could say I want to intersect it there. 
I want to intersect it there. Let's do it here. And I just hit plus, and you see all of those will put project back to that original plane. If I delete all those, I can start all over again. I can also tell it that I want to silhouette. So you see here, I'm grabbing this large arrow. This, this dialog right here is linked to the secondary arrow. The secondary arrow will allow me to drag it and ch change the thickness of that plane into a box. Now, anything within that box will be flattened, will be flattened back to the original plane there. So you see here, I it's actually, actually silhouetting the entire part. So the way to think about it is if I just look at this from this perspective, let's look at it from the top. You see the outline looks exactly like it does from this top perspective. So imagine when you're in fifth grade and you stand in front of the wall and they shine a projector on you and your, your silhouette is projected on the wall and then you just go back with a pencil and you trace the outline when you were a kid in elementary school, right? That's what this is doing. It's whatever is inside of that box, we will silhouette. We also do it with rotational methods as well. So if I just get out of here, I'm going to create a quick axis here. Oops, let's, let's do that one more time because I wasn't paying attention there. I needed to select that. And select that data, make sure that it is a cylinder and then tell it cylinder axis and best fit a cylinder axis to that data. And then now when I come over to my mesh sketch, I can say rotational method, I can select that axis and then this base plane. And with rotational, I can at, rotate around and you'll see as I rotate around, it projects this back to that original plane, right? So it's the same concept of being able to project that back to the original plane and put it wherever I want to and slice through. So as you do a lot of reverse engineering, you'll have lots of instances where this comes into play, where you might want to slice it over here, but yet draw your sketch over there. Another thing that's huge with this piece of functionality is I can silhouette this as well. So I can say, I want to create a silhouette of anything within this pie slice and flatten it back to that plane. And then I can rotate that pie slice anywhere I want. And then it will take all of that and slice it and flatten it back to the plane. Okay, so for the final piece of functionality here that's really neat is once I create that, I, let's just do 45. I can also say limit to regions. So I can say, instead of doing it to the whole set of scan data, I can say, do that rotational silhouette and only intersect it with this selected scan data. So if I get out of there, you'll see it's only doing it on that one region. It's taking all of that data about that axis and flattening it to the data there. So. Now we'll just do this one more time because I wanted to kind of show enough of that functionality there. We are going to select that bottom plane. We are going to bump it up here. And then we can actually, just like we did before, say limit to regions. I'm going to say limit to regions, just that outside region. And then I can even say, yeah, let's just do that. I don't need to silhouette this. I'll just take it as is and then hit OK. And now I'm in sketch mode. So once I'm in sketch mode, all of my sketching tools interact with this scan data that we've intersected. This is not how the Geomagic for SolidWorks tool works in a second, you'll see. Um, I can grab the line tool and I can draw a line wherever I want. That's the same as 
uh, Geomagic for SolidWorks. But I can also just roll over these line segments. The software will try to help you and say, hey, I think that's a line. So if I click on it, it'll just automatically create a line. Or I can window in, I can select, and I can say, I want to fit a line to all of this data. And you see, as I select more and more, it best fits a line to whatever I have selected. And I can remove that and add to it and create that selection. So you see how powerful that tool is. And then from there, you know, you use your regular tools in here where I want to do a corner trim. And we have a tool where with corner trims, if I just drag across the two lines, it will trim them together. Um, it's just a shortcut. Um, and then, of course, you would just, you know, come in here and add your cross-sectional tools here. But this brings up a good point. As I add that cross-section, I can override this and make it whatever fillet dimension I want, 7.6. And you'll see that we can add dimensions. Those are some tangent constraints. And you can see if I want to add a dimension from here to here, they're not parallel right now. You see how it defaulted to an angle dimension? So if I want to make these two parallel, there's a few different ways I can do it. One of them, the easiest way, is just to go ahead and make them both vertical because they're probably supposed to be that anyway. Or... I can come in and select those two lines and come over, I could come over to the constraints or just with my shortcuts and say, these have to be parallel. So you can see how you can add that. These things do come across to CAD when you send it across to CAD. So if I add all these dimensions, relation, uh, relations, constraints, and I do a live transfer, it will build them inside of that CAD package as uh, relations constraints in there that are editable on that side. So if I get out of that sketch, you'll see that here's my scan data and I drew that directly over top of the data that's there. I can come over and extrude. And if I just say I want to extrude, you know, one millimeter, you'll see there. And one thing that is different here is because we're inside of Design X, I can drag it up and extrude as far as I want, obviously, but I can actually snap it to that region if I want to. And it will snap, and then that will tell me how far it is, and I can override that dimension. Or I could say up to region, which this is not inside of SolidWorks, and I can say max distance position, mean distance position, so it'll best fit to the highest point, the lowest point, the average, and it'll even trim to a surface, which this takes a second to run. I'll go ahead and click it. If I say up to region, it's just like saying up to surface inside a CAD. It'll actually fit a surface. You see how that's not flat? And then trim it automatically. I'll go ahead and accept it because it shows something interesting here. So we just extruded that solid if I hide the mesh, you'll see that we created it. And look at it, it's not flat. I purposely use the scan data because it's not perfectly fat, flat, it's deformed. So you see that we fit that. Now I can edit that if I want to. If I come back in here, hit edit, and I could say change it to something else, just blind again if I want to. The other thing is I left these fillets separate. Because if I want to fill it this, I can select that and I can hit this search. It's a little uh, magnifying glass there. It will look at the underlying mesh and calculate what it thinks the fillet should be. And then I can override that to be whatever I want to. So the fillet tool interacts with the mesh as well. There are just lots of different ways where we're saving a bunch of time and allowing you to override dimensions and make it perfect information from that. And then another thing along with this process that's uh, beneficial is the ability to at any point just turn on deviation for body uh, really quick and check the deviation between the CAD object and Geomagic for SolidWorks, which we will show. You can do this to the CAD body 
from cad body to scan data inside of geomagic for solidworks it's just a little bit slower and it doesn't have as many features as this as you'll see in a second so now let's jump over to geomagic for solidworks and show that same process over there so in geomagic for solidworks the way i would accomplish that same uh, piece of functionality is let's go ahead and I always like using these. You're hiding and showing stuff all of the time inside of uh, CAD. And you have to hide and show things a lot when you're reverse engineering. So I like to turn on these guys and they go all the way down the history tree as well. It makes it very easy to uh, uh, turn things on and off. So let's go ahead and do a sketch. Right. So instead of doing a sketch inside of SolidWorks, what you're going to do is you're going to come over to this tool cross section. And what we're doing is we're essentially using SolidWorks sketch tools to create a sketch that intersects that polygon. But they don't have the concept of a polyline, that pink line that we worked with inside of inside of design X. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this plane. We're going to offset it up. So you can see that it has the SOLIDWORKS arrow here and I can drag it up to intersect the mesh and you can bump it up here. You can say 0.1 if you want to, and it will take a second and then update. So you can see there, if I don't want to go that high and I want to go like 0 0.06 to miss that data that's there, I can do that. You can do multiple sections and you can set your section interval here if you want to. So if I hit that and then hit enter, you'll see here that you can cut multiple sections if you need to. There's no silhouette tool. We do have project back to the base plane though which is really handy. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back to one because I don't need both of those. Just showing that the functionality is there. Um, you do have the ability to limit to a region if you want to. So if I say I want to select this region, or you can do it to a selection. So you want to just manually select those triangles, you can do it. Um, and then it has this ability to automatically draw curves or splines, line arcs. So right now I'm going to do polylines only. So what it's going to do is just give me the cross section of the scan data. But if I do give me line arcs, it will give me this plus this. Now, if I do it as splines, it will give me this plus this. And you'll see it here in a second. I'll show them. So now if I hit the checkbox, it essentially creates a sketch inside of SOLIDWORKS that has a reference polyline on it. And then I will maximize this surface body. So meshes come in as surface bodies in here. They're going to show up under surface body. So if I want to hide and show them, that's the best way to do it. Now we'll turn my planes off and you'll see it gives me that intersection projected back to that original plane. So the way I like to work is I will grab that same plane. Instead of editing that sketch, I will just put another sketch on that top plane, go normal to, and use my SOLIDWORKS sketching tools. So you can't window in, but you can snap. So if I want to draw and snap, snap my lines, you'll see that I can do that because that is SOLIDWORKS. Those are SOLIDWORKS entities. On that other sketch right so this is the way I work is it's a more manual process of just coming back and creating my sketches over top of the data that's there and then you know just use your regular trimming so if I want to do corner trims between these So it's pared down tools, but it's the essentials. It's what you just, it's what you need inside of SolidWorks to get going. So now if I get out of that sketch, 
turn on the scan data. And then I can come over to features, just using regular SOLIDWORKS tools themselves, grab that sketch. And I can't, because I'm using SOLIDWORKS tools, I can't extrude up to a region. You know, I have to go up to at a certain blind distance, which is fine, right? And then there I was able to make my flange over top of that scan data. So that is the difference between the basic mesh sketching between the two uh, platforms. Um, again, Geomagic for SOLIDWORKS is going to be more of a manual process where I cut those sections. And then uh, DesignX is going to also have the manual options, but it's got a bunch of little a bunch of tools that streamline the process and make it significantly faster. So now there's a, a couple other sketching tools that are very interesting. I'll go ahead and switch over to DesignX. We'll get out of the deviation tool, turn off solids, show the scan data, hide those regions. So we also have the ability to do 3D mesh sketching. So in 3D mesh sketching, here are the tools. You have the ability to, if I just say spline on mesh, I can just draw right on top of, I can just draw a spline directly on top of that scan data. See that? That is extremely powerful to be able to do complicated surface modeling on top of uh, scan data for very complicated surface model parts, right? And I can come over here and just draw with, with splines directly on. So even in CAD, even inside of SOLIDWORKS, when I try to draw on top of a surface with splines, it bogs down really fast. Like it barely, I mean, at least on my machine, it's very difficult to draw 3D splines on 3D surfaces, but we're doing it on top of meshes, which are even heavier. And once you do that, you can do a lot of surface modeling functionality. I can come over here and I can say, I want to do a boundary fit surface. And if I say I want to do a boundary fit surface, hit next, it'll let me adjust the resolution of the boundary fit surface. So it's going to do a boundary fit surface just like you would inside of CAD, but the interior of that boundary fit is fitting exactly to the scan data. See how it's got that, that bubble right there? And it's fit exactly to that mesh. And again, if I come over to deviation from body, it is within microns because it's fit exactly to that mesh. So I, I, created, I created that surface, but there's a ton of other, I can cut cross sections through the mesh um, in, with 3D curves, I can just draw on screen. I can select a plane. Look, at if I just draw on screen, I can slice and it will create splines through the mesh and I can use those for modeling purposes. See that? If I just draw and then if I hit OK, you'll see that it'll convert those to curves. There's all kinds of construction. You can trace feature lines where I come in and I can adjust the search depth and just draw drag and it will automatically create curves along those edges and then once you have those up you know at first that looks useless but i can come in and take that curve and i can say you know i want it to have 50 points and i can smooth that curve out and then i can even use my selection tools to manipulate and move the nodes around and move the move the curve around so i can i can do all kinds of editing on that uh, curve as well i can convert entities from other sketches i can use the boundaries of the mesh convert those to curves you know so if there was an edge somewhere um here's a nice small one that's simple to convert somewhere around here just looking for a basic one. So I could say convert this boundary to CAD 
uh, curves, right? So it's going to be a spline, and I can use that for modeling or trimming or anything like that. So there's a ton of different tools in here. And again, you can project curves in here. So you have these 3D mesh sketching tools inside of DesignX um, that are, can be utilized for advanced modeling, so more advanced surface modeling and things like that. On the Geomagic for SolidWorks side, there is no 3D mesh sketch, but in the most recent release of 2021, there is the ability to create a sketch spline so I can click points on the mesh. So it's only going to draw the spline through those points, where in Design X, I'm clicking on the screen, but it's also fitting the spline to the scan data. The other thing is you have to do one spline at a time. So if I just say create spline, it will create a 3D spline from those curves. Right? So now if I would do that again, so to do something very similar, I would come in here and I would just draw these. And then I would hit create. And you'll see what it does is it's essentially extracting those points and creating a curve between those points. And then for me, like I get close to that other one. And hit OK. And then what I'll use is I'll come back with my 3D uh, sketching tools. Let's see here, do this. Just regular SolidWorks 3D sketching tools. And I'll just redraw all of this. So once I create that, you know, I'll just come over to Sketch, 3D Sketch. And if I want to, I can grab these, these two as a starting point and I can say, you know, convert entities. And then I could come over and say I want to do a spline, and I can just draw from here, snap through to there, and hit escape to complete that. And then I'll do the same thing over here where I create a spline. And hit escape. And we'll go ahead and hide those others here. So again, the hiding and showing is really valuable having these over here, but I'll just go ahead and do that where I hide all those and show just what I meant, what I uh, selected there. So now I've created that surface. Now if I create a boundary surface inside of uh, SolidWorks, the boundary surface is only going to be uh, connecting between those curves. So if I come over to a boundary surface, and let's do this. I like doing it this way. Just hide that, and then come over to boundary surface. And yeah, it's going to make me select them as separate entities. Okay, so we'll clear these. We'll use the uh, good old selection manager to do individuals. So direction one, direction two. And let's do that one more time because I did it wrong. It's been a while since I've done it. Selection manager, this one, and selection manager. And then we will come over to selection manager. There are certain things I absolutely love about SolidWorks. There are certain things that I'm not a fan of this. And this is one is like the selection manager thing. I mean, maybe you get used to it, but we we have a way of doing it differently in our software that also throws me off sometimes. So there is the surface that I made. It's a little bit more manual. It doesn't fit exactly to the mesh, um, but it works really well. So now if I come over 
and turn this on. We didn't talk about deviation analysis tool inside of uh, SolidWorks, but you can select what body you want to do your comparison, and then you can hit this eyeball. And then that eyeball will do a 3D comparison between the two objects. So you see it's very similar process. It's basically, it's just doing a color plot of the deviation between the two. And you'll see because in here I did a strict boundary surface, it's got a bulge here that is not on the D Design X side because Design X, it fits to the scan data as well as the boundary. So that is the difference there. Um, it just depends on what you're trying to do, um, whether or not that is along the lines of what you're looking for. So a, one couple more points here on the modeling side. So we'll go ahead and clean up my view. So the wizards are a little bit different. Now they both have uh, wizards. The ones inside of Design X are just a little more well-trained and more refined. Um, and then there's a couple that aren't in Geomagic for SolidWorks. So when I say wizard, what you can do is you can select scan data in here and the software will automatically fit geometry to that scan data for you. Um, so for example, um, let's just do that flange. If I come over here to an extrusion wizard, turn on my regions, I can say, I wanna create an extrusion. That's the side, this is the top, this is the bottom. And the software will draw that extrusion. You tell it, I wanna make a solid insert which is just create a new solid, don't merge it with anything else. It will draw it for me and it messed up there. So let's just do it one more time. I changed the settings of these the other day. So let's do this. I changed the defaults, so. So let's get out of this and go back to another selection because this this extrusion is, while it doesn't look warped, it is extremely warped. So the wizard isn't going to work too well on that one. So let's let's use another one. Um, I could do a surface wizard on this one, I believe. So if I come over here and I say I want to do a wizard, I want to use it constrained to this direction, and I want to do a surface insert. Now if I hit next you'll see what it does here. This is what it was supposed to do on the other one. What happens when they catastrophically fail is the data is either not what you selected, it's not an extrusion, or the data is so warped, it's it's like almost impossible to fit that to that area. Now, like I know that's an extrusion, but if you see when I rotate around, it's extremely warped. So in this instance, what I'm using is this, that's, which fits more with an extrusion. You'll see that it automatically creates an extrusion there. And you can do what I was doing before, where you can lower the resolution and tell it the geometry is either loose or tight, like how accurate is that, and give it more freedom to stitch it together or less freedom to stitch it together and draw auto sketch. Now, when it's done, you hit OK. And then there it created a surface that you can then come over to sketch and you can edit this. So you've created geometry that you can work with. And you see, even with this data, it's not the most accurate data. So you have decisions you can make. So I can just go ahead and remove these different areas if I want. It's history based. So if I get out of it, it rebuilds that surface. You know, if I wanted to make those straight, I could obviously, but um, so that's the idea with these surface, with these wizards, is I can create um, prismatic shapes and even freeform shapes. So you can see I can do extrusion, loft wizard, and which I'll get to in a second, revolution. It'll fit a revolve automatically for you. Uh, uh, you can even do surface primitives. And these, all of these are available inside of Geomagic for SolidWorks, except for 
the loft wizard, which is uh, separate. <clears throat> Um, the Loft Wizard is only available inside of uh, DesignX. So what I can do with the Loft Wizard is I can select that surface there. I can say I want to create 10 cross sections with these sketches. And you see how it's got this box around it. Those are my cross sections and I can extend it past the geometry that's there. And you know, just extend it past so it has enough to trim with later. Now when I hit next, the loft wizard actually draws all the cross sections as sketches through that data for me automatically. And then uh, creates them as splines. And then I can, I have the ability to edit those splines and say, you know, let's make those 10 knotted splines. You see they're fives right now, they're tens. While you're still in the command, you can actually check the deviation. So I can turn deviation on, which is not available again in Geomagic for SolidWorks. Um, and I can drag these sections around or I can copy them and add sections and create more accuracy in different areas. So if I want to make more cross sections in specific areas, I can. And then if I'm happy with it, I can hit OK. And then it will build that lofted surface across that data for me. Again, this is probably a flat surface or supposed to be a flat surface. But if I wanted it to be a lofted surface, I could create that as a lofted surface. Um, and then it has all of the history that I can edit if I want to. So if I want to come into that one specific sketch, you'll see it. I can go normal to hide the surfaces and I'll just delete that for a second. You can see that's all it had to work with in that one cross section. Let's select a slightly better cross section to work with. Um, as I roll across these right there, edit that one, hide the scan data. Normal to, and if I just drag that, you can see that's what it fit to. So I can edit that if I want to. I'm going to get out of this. Actually, let's cancel. Let's just accept my change just to, to prove a point. I'm going to turn on my surface there. You'll see that I added a huge wrinkle because I dragged it and it modified that surface. All right, so let's do that over on the Geomagic for SolidWorks side. So let's get out of the uh, command that we were in before. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup here. So we'll go ahead and hide that boundary fit surface and then that solid body. Um, if I want to do that extrusion, I can grab the Extrusion. See, the interface is a little bit different here. I can select by region, um, by smart selection tool, uh, manual select where I just window in and and at, create a selection of what I want to work, or I can use the paint bu bucket selection tool. Um, so I'm going to use a region here. So I'm going to say I want to do a, a region here. And you'll see if I stop for a second, it'll show that cross section for me. And then if I want to, I could constrain that to a plane where I say that it's gotta be on, it's gotta be on the front plane, um, the top plane. So let's do the top plane. I click here, click top plane, force it to fit to the top plane. Um, curve options. I could tell it when it automatically draws, does it need to be a closed curve? Um, I can change whether it's a solid surface or just drawing me a sketch. Um, is it going to merge or cut away from something else that's in the model manager or just create a new one? Um, there's all kinds of different options. Uh, but you'll notice that it has blind. I can say up to region. So if I want to say up to region and say this one. And then this one I can say up to region. The bottom. 
And again, this is extremely distorted, so I'm not, we'll see if it fits. Oh, when I set up to that region, it's creating just that one surface there. So that's probably not going to be the best. But we will see what it outputs for us. Yeah, that's going to be pretty ugly. Some modern art. I, I will say I don't typically use up to region, but it's an option. It's there if you want to. You could just do blind, and it probably would have done a pretty good job just using blind. So once it finishes, we will take a look at that option. So what it did is it, it tried to fit the surface on the top, surface on the bottom, but I didn't select enough for it to do that right. But it did, it did create... So if we come in here and turn off all these 3D sketches, it did create the extrusion pretty well, even though I shouldn't have done up to surface. Um, but you'll see that it did a, a great job. You see how the data is slightly different. In here, um, the algorithm tended to work more. I will say this scan data is decimated more. It's not as high resolution as it is on the Design X side, um, but it was able to fit that. Now, as far as... Um, other, you do have the ability to extract freeform. This is similar to like a loft wizard, but it's not creating a loft. It's just fitting a surface. So I'm going to select all of that data. And then you can, you can select it a variety of different ways. I just use the regions. And then I'll just hit this eyeball to preview it again. Actually, let's do this. Let's use, let's clear the selection and do it as a, and we will do it using the Smart Selector tool. So the Smart Selector tool is really interesting because I can just select and drag on screen and have it select more or less data. And you do have this tool here that's interesting where you can optimize the selection, which will look at that data and try to fit better scan data to uh, try to select more intelligent data. And then when you're done, you can fit a freeform surface to it all. You'll see for some reason it's only doing that one piece. I think it likes the region to be all one. So this, this is a difficult way to show it. Um, so you see it's fitting directly there. Now, all that is is a dumb surface. It's just a static surface, just like you imported it from another package. Um, so you, just like over on the Design X side, you have extrusion, cylinder, planes, revolves, all those different options. So, you know, planes, this is the same as it is over on Design X. If I wanted to come in here and say I want to fit it to a region, I can just click a region and then it'll fit a flat plane to that area surface. You see how fast it is to model stuff like that. So that is the wizards. So to wrap up, I know I'm, this is a very long video, but I'm trying to cover all the bases on questions that I get asked, and I'm sure I'm missing some category along the way of some of the differences. But I really wanted to do an in-depth video just kind of explaining the two different products and showing them uh, side by side on screen to answer people's questions because I get this question quite often. Um, so just some general points to close up. Geomagic for SolidWorks is... I think around less than half the price of DesignX. So DesignX is more expensive. It's a premier package. It connects to a lot of different CAD packages. But if you are a SolidWorks user, it makes sense because of its uh, price point. And if you're just getting into reverse engineering, it makes sense that this is a great product to allow you to work with scan data inside of the SolidWorks environment. Um, DX is intended to be a professional production tool. If you're using this software 
every day and you're reverse engineering or recreating models from scan data, then DesignX is exponentially faster in the long run when you use it daily uh, at creating models. Um, so it will pay for itself very fast using DesignX if you're doing this daily. But if you are a SOLIDWORKS user that is just doing this on occasion, you know, maybe every six months you have to recreate a model from scan data or use it, then it doesn't make sense to use uh, DesignX unless you have the money to spend and you feel like you need it for one of those other tools that's available in DesignX. You know, if you're grabbing it, it's very approachable because Geomagic for SolidWorks has a similar user interface um, to SolidWorks. It's easy just to pick up and put down and, and get in and out of it. It's not a different software, you know, so that's handy as well. And it's just an add-in for SolidWorks that you already have. Um, so if you are not doing it every day, then it makes sense to stick with uh, the Geomagic for SolidWorks product. And then if you are a user of one or the other, um, primarily Geomagic for SolidWorks, if you are a Geomagic for SolidWorks user and you saw a piece of functionality in here that you really like or want, if you're on maintenance, you can pay the difference and upgrade to Design X later on if you want to. So if you have Geomagic for SolidWorks and you determine you have to have Design X, you don't have to rebuy Design X. We actually will allow you to upgrade your license of Geometric for SolidWorks to Design X, so all is not lost there. Um, so I hope for I hope this video was informative and useful, uh, describing all the differences. If there are questions along the way, I'll always update and add some more color commentary to this video. Um, but thanks a lot.